우리나라에서는 국가에 의한 재산권 제한 그리고 그에 대한 보상 기준이 명확하게 존재하지 않았고 주로 행정권자의 재량에 의해서 그 결정이 이루어진 경향이 있습니다. The study examines the infringement of property rights as a result of restrictions and the criteria for compensation. Additionally, overlapping regulations aimed at evading the responsibility of providing compensation are identified, and suggestions to improve the existing system are presented. An analysis was conducted on the impact of the designation and revocation of development restriction zones on land prices, focusing on regions that have had the restriction lifted in the early 2000s. The results show that designation and revocation considerably affect land prices. The price of designation revoked land surged by more than 360 to 660 percent compared to that of neighboring designated land while rising by a mere 46 to 94 percent compared to that of neighboring non-designated land. This also confirms that the designation of development restriction zones significantly infringes upon the property rights of landowners. In cases of property rights infringement, two main criterions can determine whether compensation is required. First is the issue of, is the right thoroughly recognized to be worthy of protection before the infringement. And second, how large is the disproportionality between the loss and benefit for a specific party due to the regulations? Based on these questions, case studies were conducted for development restriction zones. The stricter regulations for development restriction zones imply that the rights of landowners are considerably more restricted compared to general landowners. Additionally, because the regulations on development restriction zones are aimed at ensuring a healthy living environment for citizens, the general public benefits while the burden is shouldered by the landowners alone. This creates a huge disproportionality. In all, the decision of compensation can be made based on these two criterions. And as it has been clearly shown that in the case of development restriction zones, compensation is an absolute requirement. On similar grounds, the Constitutional Court of the Republic of Korea decided in 1998 that the lack of compensation rules within the existing regulations on development restriction zones was unconformable to constitution. However, despite the court's ruling, local authorities have since implemented new regulations to evade providing compensation. Take, for example, Seoul Metropolitan City, as of 2010, the areas for Grade 1 biotope zones and development restriction zones in Seoul considerably overlap. According to the Urban Planning Act, any and all development activities are prohibited in areas that have been designated as Grade 1 biotope zones. This rules out the possibility of acquiring a development permit. This also means that the nature of biotope zones are extremely similar to that of development restriction zones. In fact, rather than making efforts to respond to the outpour of complaints from landowners following the ruling and to protect their rights, the local government implemented similar overlapping regulations, which in turn exacerbated the infringement of rights. Another example is the case of urban natural parks. It can be seen from the graph that the land designated for urban natural parks has rapidly receded following a ruling similar to that for development restriction zones. This may seem as though the infringement issue has been resolved, but in reality, a new designation term, urban natural park zones, was established, which again worsened the infringement of landowners' property rights.
중첩 규제들에 대해서는 대대적인 정비가 필요합니다. 심각한 재산권 침해를 전제로 하는 규제를 도입하는 경우에는 지자체 차원이더라도 조례와 도시계획만으로 도입하지 않고 법률을 근거로 도입할 수 있도록 관련 제도 개선이 필요합니다. 중장기적으로는 재산권 피해가 심각한 규제들에 대해서는 재검토를 통해서 보상 규정을 보완하거나 혹은 규제를 완화 또는 폐지하는 방안까지도 검토할 필요가 있습니다.